Listen up. It's week eight of NFL Prime Time. Can this number eight come back strong against the Bengals? The Colts can't seem to stop Captain Comeback from landing on his back. Is it payback time for Irving Fryer? Can the Redskins do something they haven't done in five years? The Cowboys are trying to rediscover their winning combination. While the Falcons aren't just trying to win, the Jets haven't won at home in 364 days. Is there a battle at quarterback brewing in Buffalo? They brawled three weeks ago. Now the Steelers and Oilers battle for the lead in the AFC Central. The Broncos unleash their top-ranked round attack against the Ravens. We'll lead you into battle with our best on NFL Prime Time. Mark. Again, everybody, I'm Chris Berman. Welcome to week eight of NFL Prime Time. As we said this morning, eight in rolling the dice is boxcars. And with all these late games, dicey situation. With us as always, <laughs> Tom Jackson and the original judge. Forget that Mort stuff on Countdown. The judge, Bill Pito. First, let's get you caught up on the late games around the NFL, and there are lots of them. Denver and Baltimore going back and forth and back and forth. Vinny Testaverde has four touchdown passes as the Ravens, one time the Cleveland Browns, Trying to keep this thing close after the Broncos run out to an early lead is Curtis Martin at a, not Curtis Martin, Terrell Davis had a big day, uh, but now Denver has the ball deep trying to up the lead to 11. Right now, 38-34, the Broncos over the Ravens. Frank Reich has done it to his ex-mates, the Buffalo Bills. Reich to Wayne Corbett, the kick good after two minutes to go. Now, under the two-minute warning now, Bills have the ball, but they are tied by the Jets who are trying to get their first win of the year. Cincinnati led San Francisco 21 to nothing. But Steve Young, the Terrell Owens, tied it. And then Steve Young, a 16-yard touchdown run just about a, a minute ago. Niners lead it 28 to 21, one minute to go over the very game Cincinnati Bengals. St. Louis and Jacksonville haven't been much to cheer about for the St. Louis Rams, but it's a final. The Rams have beaten the Jaguars 17 to 14. The Houston Oilers have gone ahead on a touchdown pass from Chris Chandler to Willie Davis, and we understand the Oilers have just scored again. Eddie George, a three-yard touchdown run. So Houston, two fourth-quarter touchdowns as uh, they lead the Pittsburgh Steelers 23-13. to Remember, the uh, Steelers have not lost since the opening game of the season. And in a game that uh, of national importance, Tampa Bay is at Arizona, and the Cardinals, that is now a final it's hard to stop those cards, as Tampa Bay found out, uh, and uh, Arizona wins it by the score of 13-9. to Highlights of all this coming up a little bit later on. We start in the nation's capital, the Giants and the Redskins. The Skins, the quietest 5-1 and one team in football going in. Uh, they own the Dallas Cowboys, who they haven't played yet this year, but you know what? One thing they can't do is beat the Giants. They lost going into the season. 13 of the last 16 against the Giants, but an indicator that it's time to rev up the band that plays hail to the Redskins is that the Skins today were going for a sweep of the G-Men, having beaten them handily earlier this year somewhere in the swamps of Jersey. Gus Farratt. Very economical quarterback for the Redskins. Remember this play last week against the Patriots? It's a double reverse. And again, it's Leslie Shepard on the second handoff. And it gets it's Leslie Shepard for a big game. 31 yards inside the five-yard line. First and goal, the two. Farratt, well, who are you going to give it to? Obviously, Terry Allen. Remember, he had that 10-in-a-row uh, streak of at least a touchdown with snap. Well, he's on the boards again. 7-0 Redskins on the first drive. After another Allen touchdown, made it 14-0. Farratt fakes. Goes up top. Dan Rieller beats Jason Seahorn. Oh, what a year Ellard is having. And that's inside the five. First and goal to one. It is Allen. Boom. Touchdown. Three touchdowns. Allen, even though he only had 36 yards in the first half, hit three TDs, and the Redskins lead it 21 to nothing. And Tommy, for Dave Brown, he saw a lot of skins. Yeah, Dave Brown under tremendous pressure all day. Here you see him go back. Dexter Nodich wraps him up for the sack. And then again, Brown out of the pocket this time, goes back to pass, spots a lane out of the pocket, tries to square up to throw the football, doesn't have time to do it, but he does have time to throw it away. Now then the next down, Brown drops back to pass. And it's into the hands of Darryl Green. Tommy came into the league fast. He's still fast. He could go. I don't think Dave's going to catch him. Oh, no, wait. 28-0 Redskins at the half. The route is on again. But in the second half, the G-Men, a different team. Dave Brown from the pocket to Thomas Lewis. 
Nice catch in front of Green that time, and it's 28 to 7. Next position, third and five of the 13. Chris had a 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 Chris Galloway got in the end zone and a had a had We didn't have time to sing it. 298 yards for Dave Brown, most of them in the second half. Skins now have uh, had their lead dwindled to 28 21 until they finally get something going. A big first down completion to Jamie Ashes to Asher. Scott Blanton, 45 yard field goal. Good. And the Redskins get some breathing room with a 10 point lead. And for Norv Turner, the sixth straight win. Boy, they lost opening day. They have not turned back since. But I'll give the G-Men credit for coming back. We showed you the three touchdowns for Terry Allen. But the Skins had 252 yards in the first half of winning this game 31-21. But until that final drive, they only had 35 yards. Uh, but, again, like the Patriot game last week, it was Farratt when he had to with the trip. Last week it was to Henry Ellard. Uh, they did go to sleep for much of the second half, but with that, the drive to kind of salt it away and get insurance points, Farrat playing with a lot of intelligence, and obviously a lot of that comes from Norv Turner and the yeah, staff. Yeah, the staff doing a good job coaching Farrat, bringing him along slowly, but no pressure on him today. There's a drill in the NFL that every team runs called seven-on-seven, seven, where the offense practices their passing attack without the defense providing a rush, and I think that's the situation Farrat found himself in most of the day, supported very well by Terry Allen in the rushing game, and then in the second half, a completely different football game the Giants come back and I think that the Redskins have to be a little bit discouraged by the fact that you're up 28-0 but you can't put pressure on the quarterback and then the Giants have to be a little bit discouraged because of the lack of a running game they still need to put together a better running game for Dave Brown last year the skins went six and ten already this year the skins six, six and one They've owned Dallas. Of course, that's no assurance that they will, will beat them twice, but they play them twice late, including the last game of the season. Hail to the Redskins. Interesting. A six-game winning streak for the Skins. When we return, plenty on this edition of NFL Time, including, well, we showed you the Giants and the Skins. Who else in the division? Ty Detmer and Irving Fryer. What a combination that was today. Emmett Smith, the Cowboys on a roll, or could the Falcons spring an unlikely upset? What? NFL Prime Time is brought to you by Hager. Stuff you can wear. Mike and the gang, NFL Prime Monday. An AFC West battle between the Lightning Bolts at home against the Raiders. And that's 90 minutes getting you up until Monday Night Football with Frank and Al and Dan and Lynn and someone else at halftime. Raiders, Bolts from the Murph. That's an ABC at 9 Eastern Time at 7 o'clock Mountain Time. Let's get you caught up on late games. Under two minutes to go now at Mile High Stadium. A little wisp of snow in the air. Broncos still clinging to that four-point lead over the Ravens. The Broncos have the ball, and we'll keep you posted. We told you that the well, now the Bills have kicked a field goal. Steve Christie, a 47-yard field goal, which is seconds to go. And it looks like the Bills may hold the Jets still in the winless column, although the Jets maybe have a Hail Mary from Frank Reich coming up. The 49ers, a final of a 21-point comeback engineered by Steve Young playing hurt after Gerback got hurt at 28-21, the final Niners over the Bengals. And the Oilers at the two-minute warning now is still that 10-point lead over the Pittsburgh Steelers. They would tie them for first place in the AFC Central. When we return on NFL Crash Time. Oh, those Panthers, they're at home, and Wushi Muhammad and company, they get the good hands. Jim Harbaugh battered by the Pats. With uh, Bill Pito on NFL primetime, Billy, you know, we aren't even at Halloween yet, and the Carolina Panthers had a chance today if they could win at home against the Saints at the beautiful new Erickson Stadium, they would have a chance to sweep their entire division at home this year. Hard to believe they're only in their second year of yeah. existence. Former Saints tight end Wesley Walls is now a Panther, so Walls knows what he's talking about when he says the Saints still look at us as an expansion team. I know that for a fact. Well, the fact is... Carolina is one great expansion team. Last season, Carolina won seven games, the most ever for a first-year team. This season, all four of Carolina's four wins have come in the NFC West, including a 22-20 win over the Saints in Week 2. Panthers coming in 3-0 at Erickson Stadium. First quarter, Ron with an H start, punting. Returned by Tyrone Hughes. But Hughes is going to fumble. Carolina's Mark Thomas recovers, sets up a field goal from John Casey. 3-0 Panthers. First quarter, Carolina on the 35, Curry Collins strip, fumble, tackle, Mark Dennis falls on it. And then Tommy the Saints turn to Ray Zellers. What do you have? Yeah, Ray Zellers becoming a great weapon, Billy, for the Saints. There you see Emmanuel McDonald go for the interception right there. And Zellers powers for a first down. 
And then the handoff from Everett Sellers picks up, does a nice job of picking up his blocking and taking the ball down to the one-yard line. Sellers in, goes in for the touchdown, 61 yards this week. He had 174 yards last week. As you see, the Saints have not been blanked in 201 straight games. Third quarter, 7-6 Saints. Collins sacked by Smith. The ball is loose. Fred Stokes has got it. But hold on. you got to hold on because we got defensive holding. And after the defensive holding, Carolina maintains possession, adds a field goal, they go, they go up 9-7. Then, Anthony Johnson, Tommy. Yeah, Anthony Johnson for in for Bianca Batuka. You watch him take the screen pass. Again, does a nice job of following his blocking, making a cutback right there. It takes the ball down to the 15-yard line. Johnson, 123 yards rushing, 41 yards in pass receiving. Three plays later, Collins, Mark. Carrier, touchdown, and Kerry Collins likes it. Carolina's up by the score of 16 to seven. Fourth quarter, Saints on the Carolina 30-yard line, fourth and one. Zellers met head on by the former Saint, Sam Mills. Sam, AKA Field Mouse. The Field Mouse. Great time. Yeah. <laughs> Panthers take over on downs and go on to win by the final score of 19 to seven. Carolina now five and two. All five wins have come against the NFC West. The third straight game that Anthony Johnson goes over 100 yards, filling in for the injured Tim Biakabatuka. The Saints now 2-6, and six, and Coach Jim Moore, well, he's got some issues. Well, what happened was, that second game, we got our ass kicked, or the second half. We just got our ass totally kicked. We couldn't do diddly poo offensively. We couldn't make a first down. We couldn't run the ball. We didn't try to run the ball. We couldn't complete a pass. We sucked. The second half, we sucked. We couldn't stop the run. Every time they got the ball, they went down and got points. We got our ass totally kicked in the second half. That's what it boiled down to. It was a horse performance in the second half. Horse I'm totally embarrassed and totally ashamed. Coaching, we're all, all, our coaching did a horrible job. The players did a horrible job. We got our ass kicked in that second half. It sucked. It stunk. You know, he was coached in the offseason not to do those type of things, but he didn't, he didn't, didn't pay attention to the coaching. Not a good flight from, <laughs> uh, from, from Charlotte to New Orleans. You know, one thing that Tommy's pointed out, too, in addition to all the little details of Carolina, they're the best team in covering kicks, they're the best team on kickoffs. I don't know. This second year, these, uh, the Carolina Panthers are, are really unbelievable, and, and uh, Jim Moore had one two in a row, but not pleased. All right, Billy. Patriots-Colts, another quiet 5-1 and one team, the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, but, you know, one problem they've always had, uh, certainly since they've been in Indianapolis, is uh, against the New England Patriots. The Patriots are 8-4 and four in the RCA slash Hoosier Dome slash John Cougar Mellencamp Little Pink Houses for You and Me Dome. Could the Patriots close the gap in the AFC East? Here we go. Patriots, big game for them. Marshall Falk, another big game, not playing. Inside the 20, Colts had seven touchdowns and 13 trips, but this time third and goal, Lamont Warren. Looks like Lamont Cranston, hit by Ferrick Collins. Willie McGinnis recovers. Jim Harbaugh, deep. This is deflected by Willie Clay, and it ends in a field goal. Lamont Warren, stuffed on the third position inside the 20. The part sells his good defense. Infante not doing the Lindy. Second quarter with a score, 6 nothing Colts, but it should be much, much more. Cliff Gross is totally gross. Fumbles. Chris Sullivan with a hit. Willie, 100 pounds of Clay, picks it up, and he's to the 8-yard line. Next play. Drew Bledsoe, play action. Terry Glenn coming on. The Patriots go up 7-6 after an extra point. They lead it 10-6 at the half, despite the fact the Colts outgained them in the first half by over 100 yards. Third quarter, 10-6 Patriots, Marvin Harrison. Field the punt, fumble. Mario Greer falls on it on the 18. Three fumbles for the Colts. Then the Patriots are going to give us that opportunity. We get Curtis, my favorite, Martin. William Roberts, 76 with a block. Now I want you to watch 76 Bar uh, Roberts again. On the two-yard line, see the big fella? Hey, just get out of here. Martin, touchdown, 17-6, Peebert. After the Patriots stop the Colts, Bledsoe. Moving on up, Deshaun Jefferson, 25 yards. Then back to Curtis, Mott from the five. Darts left, darts back to the middle. Oh, he has some moves. 24-6, the Patriots, Tommy. And Jim Harbaugh, this is what he saw. Yeah, Harbaugh pressure from both sides of the line. Defensively first, Chris Slade disrupting a pass forcing an incompletion, and then Willie McGinnis right there, and look at the tenacity, misses him one time, comes back to get the sack. Harbaugh left the game right there with a broken nose. So the Patriots with four sacks today, and they go on to win it by the count of 27-9, despite the fact, as we told you, it was all Colts early on, but they did not cash in. Four Colts fumbles. The Patriots did hold the Colts to 18 carries for 49 yards rushing, and uh, 
So it's the Patriots that up their mark to four and three, just one game behind the Indianapolis Colts, who are at five and two, as the Colts just could not hold on to the football. And, and you know what? Give New England some credit. On the road, bad first half, but they didn't let it ruin the whole game, Tom. Yeah, and I think that's the key. If you look at the first half of that football game, it's one that the Colts dominated except on the scoreboard. Uh, the Patriots get a chance to get a turnover late in the first half and go into the locker room leading 10-6, to 6, come out and play a pretty good second half, even though the Colts played pretty good defensively when you look statistically at the numbers that the uh, Patriots were able to put up. But I think if you have to be encouraged about one thing, if you're Coach Bill Parcells, you're looking at the pass rush. They were able to put pressure on Harbaugh today, but now he's looking for it two weeks in a row, and that's something that he hasn't seen. Well, the Patriots win the game with defense despite their, their total offense, 222 yards. Right. Not good, that's, but with a yeah. defense, that's right. you can do some things. As we go inside the numbers, we told you about the Patriots' mastery of the Colts, certainly over the recent years. We go inside the numbers again, the Patriots, who uh, are now 9-4 and four in this domed building in Indianapolis. Against the Colts, they're 10 and 5 from 89 on. Against the rest of the NFL, 29 and 76. Now, if they could just schedule them 16 times a year, P men go to the Super Bowl when we return. Cowboys, well, here's a billboard. Inside the Numbers is brought to you by Visa, the preferred card of the NFL. It's everywhere you want to be. How could I cut out my man Sag on a billboard? I mean, you know, Troy Aikman, did the Cowboys go to the Super Bowl? Or would the Falcons spring the largest of all upsets? Jimmy Johnson, not pleased. We'll show you why. Welcome, those of you that have watched the Broncos uh, score late on a nine-yard uh, touchdown run by John Elway. Uh, final, the Broncos over the Colts, 45-34. to Final, the Bills on Christie's field goal beat the Jets 25-22. to and the Oilers are tied for first place with the Steelers. That's a final, and welcome to those viewers, 23-13, to 13, the Oilers. The Miami Dolphins beat the Buffalo Bills on the road last week. Next week, uh, the Dolphins play Jimmy Johnson's old team, the Dallas Cowboys. Today, they're at Philly. Who cared, right? This is what we call a donut game, the most dangerous spot in football. Last time the Dolphins were in Philadelphia, Don Shula won his record-breaking 325th game. He didn't have Dan Marino at quarterback then, and neither did Jimmy Johnson. Today, Doug Peterson won that game in the fourth quarter for Shula. Marino was the third quarterback today, and Craig Erickson got another start. But they all watched as Ricky running waters through the line, rumbling, bumbling, 20, 46 yards inside the 40-yard line. Next play. Tie yellow ribbon Detmer down the left side. Irving Fryer wide open. All sorts of time. No coverage. 7 0 Eagles. Ray Rhodes says, You know, this Ty Detmer may be onto something with this Irving Fryer. Fryer, of course, has been a Dolphin the last few years. Detmer, Fryer, they can do it from one yard. 14 0 Philadelphia Freedom. With a score of 14 3, third and 20. Craig Erickson. Zip. OJ McDuffie had a big day, 36 yards and a first down. Later in the drive, two minutes to go in the half. Erickson, Randall Hill rolls in, and uh, two-point conversion is converted, and Dan Marino fired up on the sidelines as the Dolphins have cut it to 14-11. But Marino knows that Irving Fryer is dangerous, and Detmer, Fryer, is for nine yards. With under 10 seconds to go, Dolphins just trying to get out of there, but Detmer says you're going to get out of there with trouble. Touchdown to Fryer. Again, plenty of time, Tom. Six catches, 73 yards, three touchdowns, first half for Fryer. But Jimmy Johnson is upset with all the time that Detmer had. Yeah, the reason Jimmy Johnson's upset is because he thought he saw an obvious holding call. We take another look at it right here. Spot shadow. Hollis Thomas right there. Going to drag Danny Stubbs down right in front of Detmer. Allow him to have the time to make the throw. So Johnson saw it right. The official didn't. Second half. What do you think Detmer's going to go to? Yeah, why not go to Irving Fryer? Slicing through the defense again. 36 yards, 28-11, Philadelphia. Fourth quarter. Look at Detmer on the day with four TD passes. But Craig Erickson's not done. He says, I got O.J. McDuffie. Zip. Another beautiful seam pass. Post pattern, 28-18. Later in the quarter, 28-21 after field goal, Rollin McKenzie says, we want noise here. Erickson to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But he's knocked down by Will Chamberlain right there. 
If Marino be warming up to save the day, well, he's the third man. If he came in, everybody else will be ineligible. No, don't warm up because Ricky Waters, he was warm. Looking to make the cut. Lewis Oliver and company, they're not going to get him. He could go all the way. 49 yards. 173 yards for Ricky Waters. And the Eagles in a wild game to beat the Dolphins 35 to 28 in a ball game in which uh, all sorts of numbers. We gave you Waters numbers prior, eight for a buck 16. McDuffie caught seven for a buck 21 in the game. And as for the quarterbacks, Erickson and Detmer each over 200 yards, but it was Detmer with the four touchdown passes, Tommy. And, you know, Miami's defensive game plan, they did so well at Buffalo last week, but whatever the game plan was, they had to at least shuffle the deck a little bit. Well, don't you think? I, I think you begin with crediting the Philadelphia offensive line. We spoke this morning on Countdown about George Hill, the defensive coordinator for the Dolphins, and what he wanted to do. First, stop the run, and then put pressure on an inexperienced Ty Detmer. Well, it happened in reverse. Ricky Waters was able to establish the run game early on, give Ty Detmer the, the, the time that he needed to play action pass, results, four touchdown passes to Irving Fryer, and it, actually it happened, it was like a game game plan in reverse because Erickson was under pressure all day because the Dolphins could not establish a run game. Yeah, four sacks by the Eagles, and we saw they had, what, the eight sacks last week uh, against the Giants, so the Philadelphia Eagles are rolling as uh, they up there mark to five and two. When we return, Keyshawn Johnson back. Would it be enough to have the Jets upset the Bills? Speaking of upsets, the Falcons toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Cowboys. Prime time. The Atlanta Falcons came in 0-6. The Dallas Cowboys, yeah, only 3-3, but Michael Irvin back. They're starting to roll. They feel it. They want to get back to the playoffs. Super Bowl. It's in Dallas. Obviously, this is set up for a blowout. That's why they play the games. And here we go. Herschel Walker, second tour duty with the Cowboys, opening kickoff. You know that Morton can hit it pretty deep. He drives Walker back to his own goal line. But look what happens. Herschel, outside, Tom, there's tread left on the tire. Look at him go. He could go all the way. Devin Bush stops him at the 11 yard line with an 89 yard kickoff to open up the game. Third and eight, then. Aikman, Emmett Smith, touchdown. Oh, this is going to be a blowout. 7 0. How about them, Cowboys? Still first quarter. Dallas up 7 3. Aikman, Durbin, 18 yards down to the one yard line. Smith would score a touchdown. 14 3. Dallas. Second quarter. Morton Anderson. You know what, I think he's pretty good, this Anderson fella. 54 yards, it's 14-6. After a field goal by Chris Bonio, makes it 17-6. Bobby Bear to Terrence Mathis, and chances are he's wide open. Down to the one-yard line, 52-yard play, first and goal from the one. Jamal Anderson, no. Second and goal, Bear, no. Third and goal, Anderson, no. June Jones says, hey, we haven't won yet, let's go. Bobby Bear. The most feared of runners. It's a touchdown. Quarterback sneak on fourth down. The Falcons have cut it to 17 to 12. June Jones says go for two. But Chad Henning stuffed Anderson here. And uh, Mike Zandowski catches the wrath of June Jones. Why? Yeah, you're going to see Henning's blow by Zandowski right at the line of scrimmage. Get deep into the backfield to take Anderson down before he can get started. Well, that Cowboy turnover. Uh, here's Tim. Watch this. Now, Timmy McHire charges through and nails Troy Aikman. Cornelius... Bennett recovers the fumble. Falcons ball sets up a field goal by Anderson, and Atlanta has the lead in Dallas. 18-17 with a big hit by McKire. Four field goals in the first day for Anderson. You heard him on NFL Countdown. McKire say he's going to wear the big pads to lay some lumber. Well, then Bobby Bear to Terrence Mathis. Third and goal, Bear to Bert Emanuel. Beautiful touchdown, 25-17. Cowboys come in the top-rated pass defense. First touchdown they've allowed to a wide receiver this year. Aikman says, oh, my goodness, we're behind. How about Michael Irvin, 17 yards? On the 20, Aikman, Irvin, makes the move. Is he in? No, he steps out of bounds on the three before the dive. First goal for the three, Emmett Smith, touchdown, 25-23 Atlanta. You got to go for two, Aikman, quick pass to Irvin. We are tied at 25, Tom. Yeah, good job by Irvin getting open, and a good job by Aikman releasing the ball right there before Chuck Smith could get a hold of him for the two-point conversion. So the Cowboys figured this would be a lapper, but they knew they had a ball game now. Smith, Irvin trying to fire up everybody. Fourth quarter, we're tied at 25. Bobby Bear to Craig Ironhead Hayward. Watch this. And boom, and boom, and watch this. And boom, and boom, down to the 22-yard line. Morton Anderson, money, five field goals, 37 yards, 28-25, hot ladder. 2.06 to go. Aikman to Kelvin Martin. 
second tour of duty as a cowboy for the Dallas 40. Aikman, minute 53 to go. Mark, shoot, gone. 60 yards, his first touchdown for Dallas since 1992. 32 to 28. Yeah, you take another look at him splitting the defense right there and doing a great job of cutting back away from pursuit so they can get into the end zone. One thing Martin always had was wheels, and the Cowboys, well, they didn't think they'd have to sweat it. Atlanta was game. Give them a lot of credit, but they still have that goose egg in the wind column, and the Cowboys are over 500 for the first time all year. Atlanta's 0-7 start, by the way, only went worse when they were an expansion team under the Dutchman, Norm Van Brocklin. They went 0-9 until they beat the Giants behind Ernie Wheelwright's running. Uh, Hebert, 25 of 40 for 272 yards. Anderson, almost 100-yard day, but in the end, a big game for Michael Irvin, 7 for 119, but if Dallas wins it, Tommy, how do we assess what they've done now in the two games AI after Urban. Well, I think you start looking at the overall assessment assessment of how this team is responding mentally to having Urban back. They play a team that doesn't have a win in the win column, and suddenly they come out, they struggle against the Atlanta Falcons. And I think it's the kind of game that they would have blown them out last year. So suddenly, I think this team has to learn to refocus. And, and I'm talking about mentally, refocusing in practice, getting yourself ready to play week in and week out. Because right now, the position they find themselves in, it's kind of like the 49ers. You can ill afford another loss right Right now if you are talking about getting home field at the end of the season well there's still two behind the Redskins and they are one behind the Philadelphia Eagles so they're in third place but at least for them on the move but give Atlanta the nod they almost pulled a huge upset when we return a lot of late games in the NFL we'll show you all of them Jim Kelly a lot of pressure on him this week how did Jimbo do for the Bills against the division rival the Jets fleet of foot huh Terrell Davis is fleet of foot but the Broncos hold off the Ravens Well, on paper, despite all their struggles, the Buffalo Bills seem to have an easy one with the Jets. After all, the Jets were 0-7. The Bills, uh, despite the loss last week, were 4-2. But for Jim Kelly, uh, after last week's disaster, this was a big game. No, it wasn't a Super Bowl for Jim Kelly and the Buffalo Bills. But for Jim, in a lot of ways, it was his own personal Super Bowl. And here we go. How would he play with the pressure? Well, first of all, Keyshawn Johnson would play for the Jets, so some of their walking wounded back. Old friend for Buffalo, Frank Wright, very close to Jim Kelly. Trying to beat his old team, Reich to Keyshawn for 18 yards right away. Four plays later on the first drive. Reich looks for Johnson. He turns Jeff Burris around, and the big fella, Johnson, makes the catch. 7-0 the Jets. First drive, three catches, 41 yards for Keyshawn, Tommy. Meanwhile... Jim Kelly needs some help. Yeah, and not getting a lot of help from his teammates early on in this game. He's going down the field, looking deep to Quinn early, puts the ball as close as he can. Of course, it's a great defensive play as well. But then Thurman Thomas coming out of the backfield, circles over the middle, and that was a drop early on. So Jim Kelly struggled a little bit early on in this game. Third quarter, Kelly 1.7 for 17. The Jets lead it 7 to 6. Thermal, 10 yards, first down. Not even Johnny Cochran can contest it. The Thurman Thomas, the new leader, all-time rusher for the Buffalo Bills, surpassing O.J. Simpson. After a field goal by Steve Christie, 9-7. Oh, it's a fumble. Mark Gunn sacks Kelly. Bobby Hamilton recovers for the Jets, and they're in business inside the 10. Right from the 9. Nice pass to Keyshawn. They can't wrestle it away. Two-point conversion good, 15-9. The Jets smelling upset. Now it's 15-12 after Christie field goal. But right fumbles. Jeff first. Johnny on the spot for Buffalo. That leads to... Derek Holmes. I said, get in the end zone, Holmes. <laughs> Two yards, touchdown. The Bills lead at 19-15, had a field goal of 22 to 15. Two and a half to go. Frank Reich, you know he can come back. He's done it as a bill. Hits Wayne Raspberry Cribet for 15 yards, first down. Then Matt Stevens hooks Reich after the pass. Unnecessary roughness on the rookie. 15-yard rough in the pass or penalty first down. Big play because Reich to Wayne Cribet. 22 yards, the Jets have tied it at 22. Under two minutes to go, now under a minute to go. Thermal, eight yards, up the middle behind Kent Hall. Heads, heads up, Steve Christie, 47 yards. Squeezes it inside the left upright, good. Like June Jones's Falcons, Richie Kotite's Jets put up an outstanding performance. But in the end, it was not enough. The Jets remain winless, and the Buffalo Bills squeak by, winning by the count of 5-2. to two. 
uh, winning by the score of 25 22 up there, Mark, to 5 and 2. Jim Kelly, 19 of 36 for 221 yards. Thermal had 97 yards. Steve Christie, six field goals, including the 47 yarder that won, another 47, another 48. A big day for him. Keyshawn, 8 for 94. Ravens at the Broncos. Broncos trying to stay one ahead of the Chiefs, who they host next week in the AFC West. 7 0 Denver very early. Elway to Terrell Davis goes right, breaks a tackle. Nice screen by the umpire, and it's gone. Good. Go all the way. 8,000 Ravens chasing him, but never more. 14 0 Broncos, 71 yard touchdown run. First half, 118 yards for Davis. Second quarter, it's a laugher. 21 3 Denver, but Bam Morris, first carry of the year, one yard. He's not scintillating. On that play, Jonathan Ogden strained a right knee. It's a very costly play for the Ravens. We know who played well was Vinny Testaverde to Derek Alexander. Randy Hilliard misses the tackle. Steve Atwater, what? He's gone to the 26. Ravens would later score to cut the lead to 21 to 10. Minute to go in the first half. Two minute drill. John Elway, who's better? Beautiful pass to eight fold. Shannon Sharp, 17 yards. Two plays later. Easy Ed McCaffrey. He's open. Down to the eight. Three plays. Elway. McCaffrey. Double coverage. Touchdown. Second to McCaffrey. 28-13. Beamhead. Third quarter. 28-20 to Denver. As Testa Birdie as the Ravens coming back. And again, 15-yard gain as he makes the play. Yeah, take a look at the replay. Alfred Williams, who's had an outstanding year. There goes low, late on Vinny Testaverde for a penalty call. Then Vinny to Michael Jackson. <laughs> into the end zone. Miss a two-point conversion at 28-26 Denver. Testaverde. The score 31-26 Broncos. Here's where he's most dangerous. Running. Look at Vincenzo. First down. Same drive. Third and five in the nine. Vinny to Michael Jackson. <laughs> Touchdown. Make a two-point conversion. Ravens up 34-31. Fourth quarter, down of the Broncos with Mr. Fourth Quarter, John Elway. To the tight end, Shannon Sharp. Oh, it's right on the money for 22 yards. Fourth and one from the seven. Mike Shanahan says, go. Elway says, sneak. Denver says, first down. Next play, first and goal from the six. Elway to McCaffrey. Third touchdown of the day, 38-34 Denver. Minute 40 to go. Vinny in the snow, in his own end zone. Picked off by Tyrone Braxton. Get up, run. Inside the 15, sets up an Elway touchdown scamper. And boy, we've seen the weather change at Denver, although it did start chilly. The snow, the wet snow at the end, the Broncos give away a big lead, but they beat the Ravens 45 to 34. The 548 yards of total offense for the Broncos is a team record. They've never had that many yards before. Elway for 326. Vinny had four touchdowns uh, in the game, 338 yards, but alas, it was not up. The Ravens have scored a lot in games they've lost, so the Broncos win it, and they're in first place at 6-1. and one. But let's go back to the Buffalo Bills. Jim Kelly, 19 of 36, 221, a, a scant win over the Jets, a little better than last week, but the Bills' performance still, they still seem unsure of themselves. Some of the play calling late was strange, Yeah, but I, but I think a little better than last week, mm -hmm. as far as Jim Kelly is concerned, is mighty important for this game and, and building his confidence. He started out, he was 7 of 17 early on in this game, so when you look at the numbers, 19 to 36, he had a pretty solid second half. Once his teammates started holding on to the football, I think his confidence started to build, and when he got down into the red zone, he was mighty careful with the football, so I would look for him to now begin to to look like the Jim Kelly of all. It'll be a better Sunday night at the Kelly House, that's for sure. And all those guys that went over with you, we had the, the piece on NFL Countdown. Thurman Thomas running up the middle, a lot behind Ken right. Hall, the that's old right. guard. Let us do some of the work. You're right, it's going to take time, but the Jets get a win with Kelly, and now they have a big game at New England next Sunday night. So, when we return on the NFL Countdown, plenty more to come. Oh, we have the cards and bucks out west in the Valley of the Sun. And speaking of upsets, the Bengals giving the Niners everything they can handle and more. Game atop the AFC Central. Steelers, Oilers, grudge match. Who came out on top? Welcome back to NFL Primetime. Once upon a time last September, Billy, the uh, St. Louis Rams started out uh, great. It really was predicated by not turning the ball over, but the defense making not only forcing turnovers, but making big plays. 
They've been wondering where that's been for a year. Yeah, they have really been struggling since starting last season 4-0. The Rams have gone 4-14. The latest loss, a 45-13 defeat against Carolina. Coach Rich Brooks says his team was embarrassed, and bench quarterback Steve Walsh called the players' only meeting during the week. The Rams wouldn't discuss what was discussed, but Isaac Bruce says if we start winning, the meeting will have helped us to the activity. Mark Brunell focused, leading the Jags downfield. Second down on the Rams, 16. Throws, but watch this, Anthony Parker. Anthony Parker, Anthony Parker. His second touchdown in two weeks. The seventh touchdown of his seven-year career. 93 yards, Rams up, seven zip. Second quarter, Jags driving again. Fourth and one for the nine. They go for it. And Brunell hits Keenan McCardle. First down on the one. Next play, James Stewart. He's got a touchdown. Jags down 10-7. Tommy, how about the Rams offense? Especially, especially horrible Billy in the first half. Lawrence Phillips here takes a handoff. Hit in the backfield by Tony Brackens. And then Tony Banks, not known as a scrambler, gets outside the pocket, stumbles on his own, and falls. 56 total yards for the Rams in the first half. Jags dominate first half. They're down by three at the half. Third quarter, Brunel hands to James Stewart. And then it goes back to Brunel. Keenan McCardle downfield. Trickery, nifty, 52 yards. That sets up a touchdown. Jags up 14 to 10. Rams, though, they come back. Third and two at the Rams, 45. Banks up the middle. And he's going to go 22 yards on this play. Two plays after that is Banks. The rookie, Eddie Kennison. Great catch here. Touchdown, Rams up by three. Late fourth quarter. Jags driving on the Rams, 39. Brunel hits Willie Jackson, breaks a tackle, and then he will be tackled at the six-yard line by Todd Light. Jags, though, have no timeouts left. 17-14, they're down three. The clock tick, 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 tick. They got to do something. The clock's ticking away. Three, two, spike the ball. Do something. Forget it. Clock. And the Jags and Tom Coughlin go down as the Rams win it by the score of 17-14. McCardle, a franchise record, 16 catches for 232 yards in the loss. The Jags outgain the Rams, 538 to 204, but commit six turnovers, including five interceptions for Brunel. Moving on now, the Pucks and the Cards. Tony Dungy, focused. Second quarter, three nothing Arizona, fourth and two. Kent Graham, look at Kent Graham scrambling. A little stiff arm, and he picks up. 19 yards on the play. Same drive now. It's Graham to Frank Sanders. And that's a gain of 14 yards. Same drive as the cards are moving. Graham hits Larry Centers. In the flat, Centers. A nifty move there. And he'll go in for the touchdown. 10 nothing cards. Cards, 10 points on their first two drives. Bucks also had two long drives, but the result not as good. Michael Usted, 49-yard field goal. It is up and no good. Next drive, instead again, 51-yard field goal, and it is no good. Third quarter, still 10-zip, Arizona. Here come the Bucks. Trent Dilfer hits Rob, double B Thomas. On the sideline, that's a gain of 24 yards. Same drive, it's a third and eight. Dilfer back to pass, nobody picks up Seth Joyner. Sack, Tommy, what do you have? Fourth quarter, 13-3, and the constant for this Bucks offense all year, Mike Allstott. See him take the ball, explode up the middle for 14 yards, and he looks for people to hit once he gets out in the open. And Allstott goes over, touchdown, so Tampa Bay down 13-9. Extra point, dicey situation again. Who's dead? An awful afternoon. Blocked, so it remains 13-9. Late fourth, Bucks still down four. Fourth and three, Dilfer, the pass, knocked down. Dilfer wanted interference. You know what? He didn't get the interference. And the Cards go on to win by the final score of 13 to 9. So the Bucks now have lost eight straight on the road. Still for 22 of 35, 229 yards, but not close to his performance from last week. Graham in the victory, 17 to 26 for 146 yards. So the Cards now, Chris, three and four, and upcoming for them, they have the Jets and the Giants a chance for them here to make maybe make a move. Yeah, Kent Graham. I mean, not a lot of points today, but but he's played very well and led him to wins. One note on Keenan McCardle, 16 catches, at times for the third best ever, Billy. Uh, in the NFL. Tom Fears, 18. Clark Gaines, 17. And then a couple of guys, Sonny Randall, a guy named Jerry Rice. And now Keenan McCardle, 16. So that puts into perspective the day that he had, albeit uh, in a losing cause. Well, 
Putting it in perspective, the Steelers and the Oilers, a great rivalry in uh, Chuck Noll and Bum Phillips' days, revisited with Noll and Jerry Glanville, and certainly three weeks ago when all sorts of money was doled out for two fights and fines, uh, a rivalry again reborn, and especially with Pittsburgh 5-1, and one, Houston 4-2, and two, round two at the Astrodome. And one thing we got to tell you, 50,000 at the Dome, partly because of this scene with Iron City Light being dumped all over him at Three Rivers Stadium about uh, three weeks ago. All sorts of fines, punches, pushes, shoves. Well, today the Oilers, remember, that was Steve Jackson, Steelers offensive line problem, Tommy. Yeah, Michael Barrow here does a great job of coming around John Jackson, not only getting the sack, but forcing the fumble, and it's recovered by Chris Dishman. So the Oilers kick a field goal, 3 nothing. Tom Zach second and 10 goes down the field. Charles Johnson, a great catch, and he's gone. Boy, had a big rookie year, and had it quiet for a couple of years. He's back. 70 yards, 7 to 3. Look at it again, Tom. Yeah, and you watch Marcus Robertson right there come in from the left side of your screen. Should have made a hit. Probably should have made a hit. Now he's gone. Meanwhile, 7 to 3. Tom Zach goes deep to Johnson. Incomplete, but the red cash and calls pass interference on Chris Dishman. And even he says, you know what? It's okay. It was a good call. I don't think I've ever seen that. <laughs> We love dish hat. 10 to 6, second quarter. Chris Chandler. Two minute drill, no timeout. Scrambling. Remember, he's playing with a bad groin and he moves forward for 30 yards. The 30 yard line, they spike the ball. And Al Del Greco. Great golfer, good kicker. 49 yards, good. 10 9 Steelers, and they have Jeff Fisher. The crowd is fired up. First time the Oilers have had the crowd for a season and a half. But Chandler hit by Myron Bell. Brentson Buckner picks it up. It's a fifth But the Steelers recover it. Seventh turnover against the Steelers this year for the Oilers. You can't do that. Eddie George sacked up by Joel Steed. Oilers punt. Steelers pin down, no, even their end. Tom Zach, play action. Looks smooth running this, Tommy. Look at the pass to Charles Johnson. My goodness, 63 yards down to the 35-yard line. Field goal Steelers. 13-9 Pittsburgh. Eight minutes to go. Chandler to Eddie George. Little dump. Little move. Little 12-yard gain. Then Chandler. His young receiver, Chris Sanders. Boom. 15 yards. First and 10. Chandler. Pump fake. Willie Davis. Open. Wide open. Touchdown. 16-13 Houston. And if there is one rap on Rod Woodson, as great as he is, he's overly aggressive. He bites on the pump fake. Allows the receiver to get behind him. Under five minutes to go. The Steelers with a chance. Tom's on back to pass. Gary Walker. Heads up. It's a bubble. Scramble. London. London. Who has it? Baron Wortham. He's not only Baron. He's an oil Baron. He's king for the day. The crowd goes nuts. Another touchdown. Jeff Fisher and the Oilers have tied the Steelers atop the AFC Central. They're each 5-2. The Oilers win it 23 to 13, 50,000, 122. That's more than the two crowds combined for the earlier home games for the Oilers this year. Chandler, 258 yards throwing. George, 65 yards rushing. Jerome Bettis, only 65 yards. His 100 yard game streak snap at five. Bengals at the 49ers. This was not Super Bowl 16. This was not Super Bowl 23. It was at three dot com park. Steve Young gets the start. His first start in a month. So you figure this is easy. Niners, Bengals, it's a laugher. Not so funny. Ashley, it's Ashley. He can see terror from there. <laughs> Ashley Ambrose with the pick. Jeff Blake. And what can't the Bengals do? Throw the 10-yard pass. But this time to Tony McGee playing on the Niners. 7-0 Bengalis. Then Young for the rookie Terrell Owens. Remember, J.J. Stokes hurt. Owens, catch, hit, fumble. Bengals ball. Not what the Niners had in mind. They're playing with half their heads today. <laughs> Young, <laughs> obviously, is Steve Young not 100%, Tom? Yeah, trying to avoid linebacker Steve Tovar right here. You can see him limping toward the sideline. And I think certainly the coach, Coach Siebert, was trying to assess how healthy he was. Blake, this is what you play. There's Tony Scott, 50 yards. 20 walk it up, and Cincinnati is leading at San Francisco. You got to be kidding me. Three touchdown passes for Jeff Blake. Elvis in the building with Young obviously hurt. The Niners at the Bengals 17. These are the Niners in the 21st century. Gerback, Ted Popson, 17-yard touchdown, 21 to 7. And Young says, way to go, Elvis. Two possessions later, Gerback. He's all shook up. He lands on his left arm and shoulder. X-rays negative on the left shoulder, but he will not return. So a very game and injured Steve Young back in. 
Young says, hey, pops it. Get open. He pops it to him. He pops into the end zone. 39 yards, 21-14 early third quarter. Mid-third quarter, two possessions, laid it. Young. Well, who would you look to? Yeah, I'd look to number eight. Jerry Rice. Bobbles. It's up in the air. Oh, it's picked up by Paul Orlando and gone. Rice can't believe it. For the fourth quarter, the Lions get another chance. William Floyd. First action of the year. Welcome back, big guy. Down to the 17-yard line, but Young threw an interception about two yards long into a Bengals gut. And that drive is timing. Two positions later. First and 10. Young. Terrell Owen. Oh, this is under money. Touchdown. Tied at 21 all. Bengals ball now at their own 13. Blake. No. Picked off by Derek Dodd, Dedrick Dodge. Blake beside himself. The, the lead was just too long. Niners ball first down at the 15. Young. Oh, my goodness. He gives in. What a gamer. Down 21 nothing. Young. Hurt. Leads the Niners over the Bengals 28 to 21. He threw for 274 yards, but ran for 10 times, 45 yards, including the touchdown. By the way, Jerry Rice has now 50 catches on the air. He's done that 11 straight seasons. 50-plus catches very quickly, Tommy. Niners, Steve Young, amazing performance. Well, and maybe a more important game for the Bengals in the sense that yes. Dave Shula had so much on the line today. All right, when we return, hey, again, the Bengals, like the Falcons and like the Jets, very game. At least these teams that are struggling, playing well. Not quite enough for a win. We'll be back with game balls and more. Stay with us. McDonald's new crispy chicken deluxe with an all-white meat breast filet, fresh lettuce, and tomato on a bakery soft roll. It's a grown Players is brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT. The way we call collect today. My game ball. Tim Biakabatuka gets hurt. Anthony Johnson, three starts, 300-yard games on the ground for the Panthers. 123 today as the Panthers win at home against the Saints. Billy, what do you have? My game ball of Vinny Testaverde, great in defeat. Four touchdown passes, 338 yards, but not enough, Tommy, as Baltimore gets beaten by Denver. Yeah, and Billy, my game ball split between Ty Detmer and Irving Fryer. They combined today for eight receptions, 116 yards, four TDs between them to get the Eagles a win over the Dolphins. And we will be back. It's the score to make a call. He told Eric Metcalf, who phoned Wisconsin, who dialed Jerry Ball, spread the word to Curtis Martin. Bryce Pop shared the news with Brent Jones. Last but not least was their friend Chris Carter. 1-800-COLLECT was used on all the phones, and they saved a bunch. They saved a bunch. With 1-800-COLLECT, they saved a bunch. Up to 44%. Mullinax Ford and buy one of these. Mullinax has over 150 great Ford 4x4 pickups to help you go in the snow this winter. Right now, they're on sale with our one low price on the window for hassle-free buying. You'll find the all-new 97F Series 4x4s, regular cabs, super cabs, even snow plows. Also, a great selection of Ranger 4x4s. Don't wait. The best time to buy a 4x4 is before you need it. Shop today at your nearest Mullinax Ford Superstore. Quickly and easily. Plus, you'll get 101 Men's Health Secrets Every Man Should Know. Call now for your free trial issue of Men's Health. You'll get the full year of Men's Health for 1997 and these three books free. Where are the answers to your questions? In Men's Health. Call 1-800-359-7744 now for a free trial issue of Men's Health magazine. Subscribe now at our lowest price and get all three books free. Have your credit card ready and call now. Ever since I was a little kid, I dreamed about winning the Stanley Cup. But I also had this dream about this gorgeous blonde from space, and she came down, and all she really wanted to do was... Cut! Cut! What? Uh, let, let's, let's stick with the hockey dream for now, Darren. Time is brought to you by Goodyear. Need tires? Call 1-800-GOODYEAR. And by 1-800-COLLECT. The way to save on collect calls. I think we learned in week eight, uh, it was a time of the year when some of the big time teams kind of, you know, lose a little edge and some of the teams that hadn't won much game performance. It's good to see them still trying. They didn't quite get in the win column. For Tom Jackson and Bill Pito, I'm Chris Berman. Thanks for watching NFL Pack. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.